Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The velopharyngeal mechanism in speech is one of the important valves for this important function. And we have with us uh, today Mrs. Landis, who uh, is going to be able to help us in uh, a demonstration of the functions of this uh, important valve. Uh, Mrs. Landis uh, was born with a cleft of the palate, and that was repaired uh, when you were quite small, was it not? Yes, I was 18 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, then subsequently, because of some problems uh, with speech, you had a, an appliance constructed. Is That's that right? correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, about how long ago was that? That was originally done in the fall of 1964. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Landis uh, has acquired two degrees from our graduate school, and so she's been very busy. To uh, help us in a better understanding of the mechanisms of the velar pharyngeal valve, we've asked Dr. John Wiley of our speech department to uh, chat with Mrs. Landis and perhaps to demonstrate some of the attributes of the appliance that she now wears. Dr. Wiley? I'd like to ask you to do uh, a couple of kind of silly things. Certainly. And uh, <laughs> you've, you've done silly things in uh, demonstrating your speech before, I'm sure. Uh, will you count from 60 to 70 for me? 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Good. And this sentence, sassy mice ran across the ice. Sassy mice ran across the ice. Okay. And one more silly one. Certainly. Mama made some lemon jam. Mama made some lemon jam. Good. Now, uh, I'd like to have you do that after you take your prosthesis out. So okay. would you? Okay, now let's count from 60 to 70 again. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Good, and now we'll try. Sassy mice ran across the ice. Sassy mice ran across the ice. Okay, <clears throat> and then the last one, Mama made some lemon jam. Mama made some lemon jam. Excellent, now, why don't you put that mm -hmm. back in again. And uh, just as a further check, let's do the counting. All right, again. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wiley. I think we all observed a number of things about uh, Corky's uh, speech with and without the appliance. She's able not only to uh, articulate more distinctly, but to project. Uh, mm -hmm. Immediately, I was aware when I stepped back a bit that her a uh, voice immediately dropped in its volume and projection with the appliance out since the air stream was escaping out her nose. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we should uh, have observed as we were trying to listen to her speak with the appliance out? Well, of course, her tone is, uh, is hypernasal as soon as she uh, takes out the appliance. Now, she's developed such good compensations that she sounds better than many people would even with the appliance out. So, mm -hmm. but uh, you still get that. And you notice another thing that even on those nasal sounds, there's some difference with the appliance in and out. Yes. And they sound more normal and more pleasant when the appliance is in. We see here a midline or mid-sagittal plane of the uh, velopharyngeal region in which uh, we are able to make this valve closure uh, in speech production. The velopharyngeal structures uh, shown can be identified beginning with the osteology 
the framework of the midline vomer uh, septum going back to the hard palate up to the sphenoid sinus area, uh, the occipital bone, and the attachment of now the musculature in the midline. One would see the superior constrictor, which uh, in general is a broad sphincteric muscle action. That's what grabs the speech aid appliance uh, obturator or a speech bulb. The superior constrictor and then coming anteriorly, we see attached to, to the torus tuberius, the cartilaginous portion above the salpingopharyngeus muscle, this ribbon-like uh, muscle in the lateral pharyngeal region. Farther forward, we see in green represented the uh, levators as they are coming down toward the midline and having a tendency to lift the soft palate structures upward and backward. Down below would be the posterior pillar, the streaming of the palatopharyngeus uh, muscle uh, as that makes its way downward. These muscles working together uh, form a sphincteric action in velopharyngeal closure and one of the uh, more acquired activities is the forward movement of the posterior pharyngeal wall. Suggested here in diagram is a somewhat bulging uh, point on the posterior pharyngeal wall, uh, which would be the level of passivance ridge bar or cushion as described. It's at that junction region that the speech aid appliance attempts to make up for the deficiencies in the approximation of the palate structure that is too short uh, or is inflexible and cannot make the adaptation to contact the lateral and pharyngeal wall structures to complete a velopharyngeal closure. And as a result, one may have velopharyngeal incompetence and hypernasality in voice quality as the air escapes out of the nose instead of being closed off. So this represents the uh, diagrammatic area of the neuromuscular structures that uh, are at work in accomplishing velopharyngeal uh, closure during speech. We'll now examine the anatomic structures involved in this velopharyngeal mechanism that is the point of interest. And uh, with the use of some retractors, we'll have a look uh, in Mrs. Landis' pharynx. Now, if we will look with some additional depression of the tongue, we will say, ah. Ah. And notice the, the wave going upward. Again, ah. ah. Ah, ah. Ah. Notice the passivance ah. bar as it comes upward. Ah. Ah. In order that we might review the dynamics of this velopharyngeal mechanism again, we see the structures uh, here with the palate at rest. We see the residual uvula in the midline and the posterior border of the soft palate going down as the palatopharyngeus muscle the posterior pharyngeal wall. We will see now in slow motion the activities that go into the dynamics of the closure. The palate elevates and the lateral walls of the pharynx come in to meet in a sphincteric action uh, attempting to make an approximation. As we come back again to the height of the contraction we see the passivance bar or ridge representing a band of the superior constrictor which forms that ridge which is used as a potential for grasping in the speech aid appliance. Here we are back to the rest position again of the velopharyngeal mechanism. For a better understanding of this appliance mechanism, we've asked Dr. Brian Lang, who constructed this appliance for this patient, uh, to be with us. Dr. Lang is head of our complete denture department and is active in the field of maxillofacial prosthesis that is responsible for affording this help to patients who need uh, the situation. Dr. Lang. It's very nice to be uh, here with you today and to see you after uh, quite an extended period uh, since 1964 and to see that you're doing so well uh, with this particular appliance. 
uh, we might comment uh, briefly on the appliance and uh, talk about its parts. Uh, this first part here is obviously the part which attaches to the teeth and extending posteriorly from the dental portion is this clear acrylic uh, part to the appliance. And you'll recall that uh, you saw the functioning of the soft palate and its elevation and then the remaining uh, opening in the back part of the throat. This part of the appliance is the element that supports that residual soft palate. And then this part here, which is a bulb that extends posterior to this lift part, is the uh, obturator or the part of the acrylic resin that extends into the opening. What I'd like you to really realize at this point is the size and shape and configuration of the bulb is indeed much larger than the opening that we visualized in the previous sequence which would indicate to me that uh, at this stage of the game, this is more uh, than adequately obturating the area and probably in revisions of this appliance, this part would be reduced uh, in its overall size. Uh, as you can also see, we have uh, fractured a clasp. And so I think that this appliance has indeed uh, served its purpose uh, during the past uh, uh, 12 odd years and it is time now for us to make some revisions and one of those revisions, of course, will be to redesign this so that our patient's uh, speech will hopefully improve even more. Uh, in the transition uh, for reconstruction of this speech aid appliance, uh, Mrs. Landis, about uh, how much time has gone by? It's been two years since I last spoke with you on film and about a year and a half since I got my new appliance. Mm -hmm. And in that time, there had to be some preparation for the foundation changes for the appliance. Is that correct? That's correct. They um, removed the amalgam fillings in my teeth and replaced them with gold mm -hmm. and then um, put in the uh, retention clasps on two of the teeth mm -hmm. that would hold the new appliance. So those were for modifications to improve the stability, probably, of the appliance before they reconstructed the, the new one. So I understood. Right. And in the uh, fabrication now of the present appliance, you've worn that for about how long? Almost six months. The end of December, it will be six months. Mm -hmm. We'll probably want to ask you a little bit about your uh, adjustment to that uh, after a while, but just for comparison, uh, let's have a look, uh, perhaps, at both appliances, if you might take out your present one, and we'll look at that, comparing it with the older one. Certainly. We'll now have an opportunity to compare the structural characteristics of these two appliances. Both of these were constructed under the direction of Dr. Brian Lang of our uh, prosthetic department. And if we compare them, uh, this one was constructed uh, some 12 years ago. And uh, opposite it is the new appliance, which has just been inserted over the last six months. Uh, we might look at the several components of the appliance and see how uh, the changes have uh, taken place. First of all, the obturator or the uh, actual speech bulb we can see at the terminal portion of the appliance is much smaller in the newer appliance than it was in the one fabricated 12 years ago. That would suggest a significant uh, modification in the musculature of the pharyngeal and palatal areas that we will look at a little bit later and suggest that there has been an increase in muscle activity so that the amount of space that needs to be occupied by the speech bulb has diminished. In the tailpiece of the appliance, we also see a significant reduction in the quantity or bulk of the appliance that is present from the old to the new. In the framework or the supporting uh, foundation uh, of the appliance, we also see significant changes. Uh, the uh, metal uh, is cast gold here and is a combination of uh, precision gold clasps in this appliance plus a tyconium fabrication. But the bulk of the framework uh, is also smaller and the relative uh, dependence upon the tooth borne aspects of this appliance compared with this appliance has also changed. If we look at the metal framework here that is carefully contoured to adapt to the rugal pattern of the hard palate, we see a lot of contact with the firm bony foundation of the anterior palate. 
This means that any leverage is distributed to the uh, bone areas of this appliance as compared with uh, the previous appliance in which there was less bone contact and greater dependence upon the anterior clasps that uh, are present at this point. There are other changes that are apparent here. If we look at the speech bulbs in profile, we will see that not only are they uh, sm changed from the larger to the smaller in uh, overall volume, but the level has changed. Uh, it was necessary to go much higher uh, to obturate with the initial appliance than it is with the new one, which is relatively small. We emphasized that there was much more dependence upon tooth uh, foundation and support in the first appliance than there is in the second, and we can appreciate this perhaps most in the difference in the clasp designs. We see in the old appliance a circumferential clasp design with an occlusal rest and uh, arms that come out to engage the entire tooth, whereas in the new appliance, which is less dependent and is more uh, reduced in bulk, we see a precision attachment which goes into a gold restoration, the female portion going into the gold restoration so that the locking mechanism uh, that uh, relates to the tooth support on the new appliance is significantly reduced in area, significantly reduced in uh, wear and tear on tooth structure, and, and uh, so far as contact for plaque is concerned, there is similarly a significant improvement. So we see these modifications in structure that have been incorporated uh, through Dr. Lang's adaptation to the changes that this patient uh, has uh, undergone in the 12-year interval. Uh, we now would have a look at this appliance as it relates to current function. Uh, in the previous uh, sequence taken with the old appliance several years ago, and Dr. John Wiley suggested that Mrs. Landis might say a few sentences uh, which might demonstrate the change of the uh, voice quality and other aspects uh, with and without uh, the appliance. So we'd like to do that again, and we'll ask uh, Mrs. Landis, who does not have her appliance in at this time, if she might uh, count from 60 to 70 for us. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. And now a couple of uh, silly sentences. Uh, sassy mice raced across the ice. Sassy mice raced across the ice. And mama made some lemon jam. Mama made some lemon jam. Uh, those uh, speech uh, aspects uh, are rather standard for demonstrating velopharyngeal competency. And now we'll ask Mrs. Landis to put her appliance in and then to repeat those uh, same phrases for us. Now, first we'll count from the 60 to 70. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. And now the other silly sentences. Sassy mice ran across the ice. Mama made some lemon jam. How about throwing one more in? Zippers are easy to close. Zippers are easy to close. I'm sure that we can uh, quite distinctly see the difference, and you're finding this appliance quite comfortable? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an occasion when we can uh, also take an opportunity uh, to thank Mrs. Landis for her contributions as coordinator for our cleft palate uh, unit at the University Hospital, where she has served uh, admirably and in a dedicated fashion. And we, she is now going on leave from that occupation, but we do wish to thank her for serving in that capacity You're so welcome. well. Thank you. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. 
For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.